you know, our smartphones have changed the whole digital photography game just dramatically. Of course, you realize that. They are so advanced, we can take such amazing photos now with our smartphone that in some ways, the digital photography game has changed. And that's less about taking great photos now because the technology makes great photos. But it's now it's more about organizing our photos and managing our photos because we're taking so many photos and now finding the photo that we're looking at and organizing them has become far more important. So today we're going to take a look at Google Photos and I'm going to share with you five things you need to know to get the most out of Google Photos. I promise you, you will be glad you joined us today on Dotto Tech. Steve Dotto here. How the heck you doing this fine day? And welcome to Dotto Tech. Today, as promised, we're going to be talking about five things that you need to know to get the most out of Google Photos. Now, I hope you watch this entire video, but if there's just one specific thing that really piques your interest, I'll give you a list here of the five main topics. And you can also check in the description. There'll be a table of contents there where you can just click directly to one of the features or one of the items if you want to jump ahead and see something that's of specific interest to you. But I think you're going to want to see them all, and especially this first one and the last one. I think they're kind of unique. All right, we're going to start with the memories feature in Google Photos. We've also experienced it. We've experienced it in Facebook and other places as well. But we've all looked on our phone and uh, in the morning on our, on our wallpaper or in some place on our phone or sometimes on our computer, memories will come up that Google will share with us from Google Photos. But they'll share memories on this day, this week, three, four years ago. And that's kind of sweet. It's kind of nice, isn't it? Except it's not always kind of sweet and nice, is it? No, it's not because sometimes we don't really want the memories that we have images of. Um, my dog Farley, uh, we lost him about a year ago and uh, it still hurts. You can tell I've, I get even a little bit emotional sharing it right now. Um, but I love Farley, but I miss him. And I don't necessarily want to be reminded every day when I look at my phone that Farley's not there. And we've taken a lot of pictures of Farley over the years. I believe Someday, hopefully in the not too distant future, I'll want to see those memories regularly in my feed. It will make me smile, but it doesn't make me smile right now. And so I would like to be able to control when I and where I see those memories. I would like to, if I search for a photo of Farley, I want to find it, but I don't want it to be presented to me unbidden. They've got a feature and, I, and I've never seen anybody else sharing this feature. Um, maybe you have, maybe you've seen it shared, but uh, I'm not sure. Here it is. When you open Google Photos, you have a gear icon here in the top right, the settings. And this is something, if you haven't looked at the settings, you should spend some time going through the settings. We, I don't have time to go through all of the settings with you today, but there's a lot of good control that you can apply in these settings. But this is the one that I want to share with you today. Manage what you see in your memories. This is gold. This is something which is terrific. You can hide people and pets. You won't see faces in memories, creations, uh, or your search page. So they're not going to be suggesting things. So I can go through here and I can say, you know what? I just don't want to see pictures of Farley for now. I can change it later, but I just don't want to see them now. And so now in my daily memories, I will not be getting pictures of Farley, reminding me that he's not here anymore. And this goes beyond just people. Although I imagine it's, it's going to be very useful here. I'm laughing. It's not really funny, but it'd be very useful in with exes and relationships, those sorts of things. Um, and they, you can also hide dates and this is also really useful. Perhaps you were in a fender bender, a little car accident, and you took pictures of the car accident. You don't want to be reminded that you were in a car accident a year later. It's an anniversary date. Woohoo! Look what happened on this day last year. <laughs> you were in a car accident. So you can control the dates. You can control the people and the images that Google is sharing with you in the memories. I think just for our mental health and our sense of well-being, this is a healthy feature to add. I don't know why Google doesn't sh make it more evident that this is there. Just a quick aside, while I was editing the video, I thought I should take a look and see if I can figure out how to hide memories in Facebook as well, because uh, it's the topic that we're talking about. And we do get these memories in Facebook. I looked it up on Facebook. They do have a memories home section where you can adjust whether or not you get notifications. You can turn off all memories, but you can't hide everything. Uh, like you don't have as granular control. Uh, you can hide individuals, which is a good thing. You can hide dates. Again, a good thing. Same thing as we have in Google. But you can't hide dogs uh, or, or things like pets. They can't go quite as far as Google goes. Uh, but you do have a little bit of control. It's in, the, it's in called the Memories Home 
within Facebook. And now back to our regularly scheduled programming. But before we leave this particular topic, uh, a lot of us manage our Google Photos on our computer, but more of us manage them on our smartphone itself. And so I'm going to wherever it's appropriate today in today's video to show you both uh, interfaces. You've just seen it on the desktop. On your smartphone, in order to get and control the same settings, you tap on your avatar, you tap on your picture, you can see Google Photos settings. It's the gear icon, the same gear icon as you see on the desktop, except it's buried underneath your underneath your profile picture. And if we scroll down within that, we can go to memories and I can go into memories and I can see hide people in photos and you can see that we have the same control. We have the same level of control. Okay, now let's look at some of the kind of behind the scenes with Google Photos and how we actually end up using it and my three keys to using Google Photos or maybe not three keys, the three things that I think we end up using Google Photos for the most. Now we end up using Google Photos regardless if it's on our smartphone or on the desktop. First and foremost, we do search on it. We is we want to find images within Google Photos. Now, since we're taking so many photos, we could have hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of photos in our collection. So having some technology that helps us find the relevant photos is a really important part of Google Photos. And of course, Google does that spectacularly. Once we found the images that we want, we want to organize those images into collections, probably into photo albums, so that we can do another activity with them. We're basically choosing the photos we want, collecting them together, and then we want to be able to share those photos. So the sharing features that are built into Google Photos is profoundly important as well. Finding Google Photos, doing the search, uh, well, this, is, this has been a couple of years that we've been using it this way, and it still, to this day, blows me away the facial recognition and the image recognition capabilities that are built into Google Photos and just how powerful that is. So if you go into the search in the desktop, as soon as you click on search, you get a roster of the faces of the different people who Google has identified within Google Photos. And if you've chosen any of those people and you've assigned names to those people, you can do searches based on their names, not just on their faces. Let's go over to the smartphone and let's tap on search in the smartphone. And you can see that we have the same criteria. We can see that we can search based on people's faces, their names. And if I type it, tap into the search bar, and now I'm going to type in location, I'm going to type in New York. And I bring that up, up comes a map. Now one of the beauties of Google Photos is it's tied into the Google ecosystem. So it's tied to Google Maps. So it could tell where our pictures were taken. And as you can see here, if I zoom here in on, on Manhattan, on New York, those are all the places that I took photos on the last trip that Shannon and I did, which was now a while ago, unfortunately, uh, to New York. But you can see all of the photos. And if we scroll down here in the bottom, let's just close that down. And let's scroll down the bottom. We can see all of the different images that are that were taken within New York. So that this is using a combination of the geotagging, where location services are turned on so it knows physically exactly where it is. But there's also image recognition where it looks in the background and recognizes what's in the background and then classifies it as well. So the ability to be able to create collections of our images based on search criteria of things like location, faces, and let's go back to the desktop for a moment and activities. Let's type in cooking. And I type in cooking and up comes all sorts of different images of meals being prepared, cooking, barbecuing, soup being made, pots of spaghetti, all of those different things that we've taken pictures of as far as cooking. So you can, because we take so many photos now, we need a tool that will be able, uh, will help us find the images that we're looking for. And the Google Photos, the intelligence that's built into Google Photos, the facial recognition, the location, the activities, the objects. If I type in boat instead of cooking, if I type in boat, it's not an activity, but now it's an object. I can find all of the different images that are taken with us with boats included in the images. So you see that we can find what we're looking for. This is a great feature built in to Google Photos. Now, once we've found all of our photos that we want, we now need to be able to put them into a collection because we want to be able to organize them primarily so that we can share them. And how do we do that? Well, you can take any of the photos and you can just, in if you're in the desktop, you can just click on the little, uh, the little check mark at the very top and that's going to collect them together. And once they're collected together, put them in an album, we can add, create a new album, a new slideshow, or this is my favorite, a new shared album. If we create a shared album, we can then name it, 
as shared with friends. And then we can take this entire album and we can add to it in the future so it's a dynamic collection, but this is the key. We click here in the top and we click on share and we choose who we want to share this album with. Now, if these people have, in order for the shared album feature to work in this way, they need to have Google Photos. And if they have Google Photos, then the shared album will be brought into their Google Photo account. But that's not the only way that we can share photos within Google Photos. And let's go back to the smartphone and show you some of the other ways that we can share photos. So I'm gonna go back into the smartphone and I'm gonna go into Photos and I'm gonna select a few photos from within our photo collection here. Press and tap lightly on any one photo, it then gets selected. It, it's a little bit finicky. You'll get used to how to select photos within Google Photos on the phone, uh, but as I say, it is a little bit finicky. Once you've selected the photos that you want to share, if you, you can add them to an album, just as we did on the desktop, if you hit the plus key, but if we tap on the share icon here, this is Google's sharing feature built in. So it's the exact same as far as sharing it to other people, to their Google accounts. But if we continue on and click on share to, that then brings up our operating system based sharing. And all of a sudden we we're, we can share it far beyond just our, just our people who have a Google account in Google Photos. Instead, we can share them into Facebook. We can share them as text messages. We can share them uh, to individuals through text messaging or through any of the other apps. If we take a look down here, through any of the other uh, integrations that are built in to our smartphone. I can send them to my computer if I wanna save them or download them. You've got all of those options once you have, once you've tapped on the sharing tool within Google Photos. And one last thing is if you don't wanna send all the photos because of bandwidth, maybe you're sending them in mobile, you can create a link. And creating a link will share the photos, will share a collection of the photos with others. So instead of sending them all the photos, you can just send them the link and then they can open up the link and they can download the photos when they want, where they want to be able to do it. So the sharing that is built in is just amazing. The last thing that I'm gonna show you as far as the things you need to know about Google Photos is only on your smartphone version of Google Photos at this point, and it's an application called Google Lens, or it's a feature called Google Lens. And here's what Google Lens does, is it identifies what's in a picture and it tells you. It's, 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 it's a visual scanning recognition tool. So let's just go back. Let's I'll show you it in two different ways. Let's go back to those, those photos that we took in New York. Uh, because I saw there that while we were in New York, Shannon and I visited the museum. And let me just scroll down, there it is. So let's pull up a picture from the museum. And there's a picture. Now, you as a art aficionado might recognize this photo, uh, but other people might not know what the name of the photo is or who the artist is. If, you're, if you want to identify it, information like this photo, if you look down at the very bottom of the screen, you see there, I've got that little, that, that it almost looks like a target. If I tap on that, that is Google Lens and watch the process. I'm gonna tap on it and you'll see some dots appear on the screen and it's going through image recognition and it identifies, there's the photo, there's the image, sorry, the painting. And it has done a search and it's used the combination of the image recognition and Google's incredibly powerful search capabilities and tied it in and this is in and it's identified it as Vincent van Gogh this works for plants you can point it at a plant and say what type of plant is it and it'll tell you what type of plant it is it works for so many different things you want it you want a, a, even a more uh, kind of a stark example Shannon and I were on a walk just a little while ago and as we were walking we <laughs> we saw on a stump uh, what we thought was a bird but just looking at it with the light that we were in and it was kind of through a bush, we couldn't tell for sure exactly what it was. So let me just find that photo for you. There it is. So I zoomed in to take a picture because we thought it was a heron, but we weren't positive. <laughs> and when I zoomed in, I could say, yeah, I can see it now. But when we were looking at it with the naked eye, we couldn't tell. But watch how powerful Google Lens is. Tap on it now and it goes through and it sees in there that there is indeed a blue heron and it marks it down information so you can identify the type of thing that you are looking at using Google Lens. As I say, this only works in the mobile version of Google, uh, of Google Photos, 
but again, it just tells us just how powerful the intelligence in the background is. And it, and it gives us a peek of where this technology is going in the future. So recapping the five things that I think you need to know about Google Photos is controlling the memories. So you're getting the memories you want to see and the ones that you don't want, you can park for a period of time. Managing search, being able to find the photos you need through search, organizing them into collections, and then being able to share them with loved ones or whoever you happen to want to share them with. And finally, identifying things, being able to classify information using Google Lens. Those are the five things that I think are uber cool in Google Photos. So what do you think though? Are these five features things that you really are interested in using in Google Photos? Or did I miss the thing that you like Google Photos for the most? If there's another way that you use Google Photos, another feature that you think is unbelievably cool, please share it in comments and maybe it will become the subject of our next video here at Dottotech. I gotta thank you so much. I hope you found value in today's video. And if you have a thumbs up and a like would be greatly appreciated. Now, one last thing. Here at Dottotech, we host a weekly tutorial webinar called Webinar Wednesday. It's a free tutorial on some aspect of content creation or productivity, and you are invited. There's a link right here. I'd love for you to drop by and join us. If you've not yet participated in a Webinar Wednesday, I think you will enjoy it. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.